still? It's uh, not a still. Son and wife of my stallion, the survivors. Good, good. Hello, this is Emily Payton with Organic Politics from the ground up. We're here with Frankie Bra Blake at oh. his animal sanctuary. And we have some issues here that we're uh, trying to cope with of a of a hostile takeover. Um, could you uh, speak to the people of Vermont and tell them what it is you do, Frankie? I, I'm a shepherd for animals. I take, I, I uh, feed animals. I've had, uh, my father was induct inducted into the Hall of Fame of Racing. I was on, in Saratoga and Foxborough. We were on the road all our lives with our racehorses. My parents are dead now. I'm, I'm a USTA licensed uh, uh, standard bred driver uh, and my trotter is dead so I'm now here I came here I was given the opportunity to stay here with a family and as soon as I got in here they the town told me that it would be coming up for auction you were saying Frankie that you've been paying taxes for five years on yes this place. every month yes you have in the and your desire is to live your entire life you're the most athletic person I've ever met there's no reason you can't live to 103. Thank you. I figure two or three hundred. <laughs> I expect a long, long, long time. So I have to serve people and animals. So you are uh, a happy neighbor, Jesse. Yes, yes. And, Frank uh, is one of our neighbors. And um, can you describe for our viewers in Vermont uh, what it is that's here and why it's special and why we need to keep it? Well, Frank is a wonderful neighbor. He's very kind, he's very generous, and yeah. he's an important part of our community. And he does wonderful things for the animals. So mm -hmm. we're, we, he's, a, he's a piece of the fabric here. Right. So it's important that we as a community in Vermont stand up for each other, uh, particularly when out-of-staters come and decide to just eject us and inject their own suburbia type mentality, which is to remove animals, remove people who are linked with nature and just make them non-existent. So we're asking for your support. We're gonna need support to stop the threatening things that have been happening through this man, what's his name? Mayo. Mayo. Yes, Melvin, Melvin Mayo. Melvin Mayo needs to stop threatening Frankie Blake we need to get this piece of property into Frank Blake's hands for good. And we also need help from you, our viewers. We'll be covering this ongoing. I guess, you know, I, I, think, I think it's really important for people to understand that in a time of when, when materialism is becoming almost the religion of the 2000, of this 21st century, that one might look around here and say that there's something wrong with what Frank is doing. But what I see is that there's incredible integrity here. And he's been able to recycle all these trucks and buses and create a clean atmosphere and a healthy atmosphere for himself and his animals. It's ongoing. And, he, it's... and he's living in nature and, and he's a good man. And, and it's animal... very easy to begin to, to um, sanctify the wealthy because they could come here and make a nice pristine scene for Vermont but that's not freedom and that's not what we're all about here so and clearly the animals love you thank you in the future I, I will buy, build a barn here so I intend to get more information from the town clerk and some other neighbors who are very concerned about Frank's situation but as I understand it Frank's home and animal sanctuary is situated on land that is tied up in an estate. He has been paying taxes on the property but does not have legal ownership. 
And now, a man who I believe is named M Mayo is attempting to acquire the property, evict Frank, and shut down his animal sanctuary. According to Frank, the man already has two homes and has threatened to bulldoze the home that Frank has created here for himself and his menagerie. Receiving such threats, Cannon has raised great concern for Frank, who does not have the financial recourse, uh, resources to secure legal recourse or to purchase the property. I was on the fastest, the Bolero, the fastest sloop yellow in the entire world. We sailed uh, from Flo Sherburn Harbor, Fort Lauderdale, all the way to Mayport, New Jersey. We ran into uh, Hurricane Jean of 1965, and I was the helmsman and the last one to take the watch. Everyone passed out below. 100 foot seas, and that parrot lived that voyage. Uh, uh, what led into this was that I saved a Mi'kmaq Indian child in the rapids in Broad Brook. I was just lucky, he was lucky enough to divine intervention to, to pull him out of the water, saved him from drowning. Some 38 to 40 years later, I was drowning financially, nowhere to go, and he turned around as an adult now with two children and saved my uh, bacon and gave me the chance to stay here. That's so how it all. So this is where you should stay? Uh, I surely hope so. I haven't played in a year, it hasn't been out of the case in a year, so. I do good. Well, let me just adjust this reed, it's, it's a new reed. Don't roll it yet. Just...
that. This is Colt. I rode his great great grandmother, this guy right here. This is New, New Moonshine Yukon Golden River, is his name. And who's this? And this is his mother. She's a Spanish, uh, a magnificent Spanish amount. She was in the coronation in England. They, the uh, the uh, soldiers rode her, or, or her kind, in, in the coronation, as you see in the parades. You'll always see that very special Spanish uh, mount right there. She's built like a Sherman tank. She's like a huge, huge uh, a rhino, I mean, ma massive muscle. She's a, uh, his bloodline goes to Poland, the Russian invasion. He's, he's a scourneck. You're looking on the computer. He's one of the most famous uh, e uh, Arabs. I wrote, like I say, I wrote his great, great grandmother and had his father, his mother and sire uh, all the way up the line. He's the, um, he's to carry on the bloodline. His father just died. In the saddest week. He died the fifth. I've been in mourning. I've been so saddened over this. It's just it's the saddest thing that's ever happened for a long time. Ai, ai, ha. Mande ai. Par. Ok, ha. Mande ai.
lazy river. I gave just a few different uh, tunes intertwined. I go, I can go on for thousands of tunes. I know all the black books, standard books by memory. I've been playing since I was 12. They dressed me up in a dark suit. And back then, years ago, when I was a child, they had me in Grange halls and uh, moose halls and square dances. And uh, they'd, <laughs> they'd sneak me in the back door because I was so young. And uh, those are my gigs at 12 years old. Um, and then I played with Sam Andrews, a brother and Holden company, for four hours at uh, Wyndham College. Uh, I had the honor of jamming with him. He said he'd tape with me anywhere in the world. He's still alive, Sam Andrews. Sam Andrews is the lead player. He play, I played then a black and white guitar. I, um, I warmed up for Jerry Lee Lewis, <laughs> Wedgwood Park, Oklahoma. Uh, Wedgwood Park, Oklahoma people were the most beautiful people in the world to me. All the girls uh, chauffeured me around in a white... <laughs> Will you put a, put a zip on your beak? They chauffeured me around uh, Oklahoma City in a white Cadillac. Uh, I had a parrot on my shoulder I toured with. I played for Frankie Valley at the Capri Club in Philadelphia. Uh, he sat in the audience. I sat with his band. He loved me. He was a very compassionate man. Frankie Valley is a great, compassionate guy. I've uh, met Duke Hanamoku in the Hawaiian Islands before he died. I said, you have the biggest, biggest nose, the bluest eyes, and the whitest hair I've ever seen in anybody in my life. And he laughed. Duko Hanamoku, what an honor that was. And I saw Art Linkletter and his wife at the same time, that same week. That's the mother in the background, mother goat. And this is Pale Face, the one in the front. I called her Pale Face because she ran around the property with a pail hitched uh, around her head, horns. And I, I took it off her head and called her Pale Face. And that's uh, Pony Boy. He gets out later and has his run. Uh, he, he was an exhibit at Santa's Land. I had a 30 deer. I was uh, uh, as a musician there. And then uh, the deer were to, they couldn't get darts into them for inoculation. They had a mile to run. And so they, they were going to market them and, and, uh, for food. And the vets, state vet, and they all walked. And I, I got back to the office and begged them if I could tame the, the herd and get them into a circle and it took me the winter i did i t i threw a buck and a doe and i have photos of kissing both of them uh i a long story short i was able to lead them into a circle and have them inoculated all 30 30 deer a lot of times she'll come up and let me pet her and tickle her neck and face Love you, me. Love me. so she's been with me now since 02 and very, very gentle, very, very, but um, when they're cornered and you grab their legs, uh, she can pull your hands right out at the wrist. It takes a long time to heal. Uh, they're so powerful with those legs. But when you move them, you have to get behind them and uh, put your arms around them and then lift them, lift them up against you when their legs are out and then uh, load them when you're moving them. Very difficult to move them. It's risky. It's a matter of life and death. They're so powerful. But they, uh, the great-great-grandmother of this one, these goats, is, uh, are, is on the bus uh, fighting for her life. Uh, I'm up day and night with her, getting her through pneumonia. I've had the fires going, and, and she's there now, if you'd like to see her. This is my hospital. Uh, the bus is a hospital, and the, the camper way back has saved many animals, uh, cockatoos, uh, uh, um, uh, Peacocks by the dozens. Uh, I've, I've saved many, many animals in that camper back there. I call it a hospital. And my parrots are in there. Over 50 years I've had one of them. And the other one is uh, 25. E.T. is 25 because they had the 25th anniversary for the film, as you know, just a few months back. And um, then I have uh, pigeons from uh, Italy in there. Italy. Italy around surrounding me in there. And they coo me to sleep. Uh, and I have a hen and rooster that was given to me from the uh, Pam McFadden from the town office gave me a hen and rooster. And they lay my breakfast. Even before I go outdoors, I have eggs to eat. And then the ducks, uh, uh, Mrs. Mominy gave me two ducks, and they lay me two eggs a day now. And uh, with a little rice, I have my meal. This is where I stay to watch over the sick. And I cover these windows to, uh, for, for lately that I don't want someone to know that I'm sleeping in here because they could easily uh, 
shoot me going by. I call it the shooting gallery. So you're they used scared, to shoot. You're, you're that scared of this. Uh, oh, definitely. This when I first moved in, they used to shoot uh, BBs, uh, plastic BBs, at my horses, and then I got those huge big uh, tarps from the mill. And, and felts and covered the front of the stalls, yeah, and there'd be yeah. BBs in the morning. Wow. Uh, how, how about uh, this Mayo guy? You uh, scared of him? Mayo, uh, I, I don't trust him at all. He's, he's probably the most crafty person that I've ever met. He's cold blooded, and uh, I wouldn't put anything past him. He, he, when he first met me, he says, uh, you, you belong in a home, uh, and, and I he, want the property, and you, be, you don't belong here. And You said he threatened you with a bulldozer? No, but he's he's uh he's going to vamp this. He's going to just no. Uh, you he's threatened to. He's threatened to to tear down everything. On oh him? yes, yes. Oh so yes. He's going to come back with a bulldozer. With, yeah, without any question at all, he's going to take. No, he said he's going to. He said he's going to when and, he gets. And we're not going to let him. I, uh, um, to serve papers. I, I I this everything's paid for here. All of this. Uh, everything is paid for, and, and uh, I want to stand strong for it and keep it safe. Uh, we'll open this for her. I remember. There we go. Whoops. Anyway, that's. Hey, how is she? How is she doing? And uh, okay. As you'll see. Hi, sweetheart. Good company. So as Hello, you see right here, you, that's crimped oats you're stepping over. Mm. I got all the grain Hello. in here. There she is in her. She's doing well. You don't hear much of a rattle. So. All the pneumonia and the fluids from her lungs have subsided. <laughs> so, can we want to sing? <laughs> <laughs> when you're flying Do this summertime again? We weren't rolling then. Do you want to do that one again? You want this one again? No. Yeah. Ironically, inside of an igloo. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering if I could. Let me try something different. Summertime and the living is easy. Fish are jumping and the living. God, God, he's a. Your daddy's rich and your mom's good looking, so harsh little baby. Summertime in the living is easy. Fish are 
for them to take. You're leaving. 